Now, a land of about 200 acres just south of Tamil Nadu, 33 kilometers from the Indian coast, is now in the midst of a political storm, not just in Tamil Nadu, across the country. If you hail from Tamil Nadu, we're sure you've, if you've heard, in fact, of the Kachatheva Island controversy. It's something that's dominated political headlines in Tamil Nadu for the last many years, finding a mention in manifestos before elections and whatnot. This time is the BJP that's raised this with an RTI reply that they've put out to allege that Indira Gandhi ceded territory to Sri Lanka with absolutely no fight back in 1974. As part of this RTI revelation, the BJP has also put out statements by Jawaharlal Nehru, by former Prime Minister, where he says quite simply, nobody cares about that island. Is this an issue that can actually resonate in Tamil Nadu? Because the BJP clearly is talking about it with an eye on the Tamil Nadu elections, which is happening in phase one on April 19th. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Let's round up first for you all the reactions in our report. Political row over Kachai Tivu Island escalates. External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar on Monday launched a scathing critique of the Congress and DMK, claiming the island was ceded to Sri Lanka during Indira Gandhi's tenure. Jay Shankar emphasized India's long-standing historical claims to Kachai Thivu and alleged the Congress had dismissed it as an island of little importance. Whether it was Pandit Nehru or whether it was Indira Gandhi, this very dismissive attitude this little rock, this island of no, small island of no importance. This was the historic Congress attitude towards Kachati. The controversy erupted after an RTI reply to Tamil Nadu BJP chief Anamalai said that the transfer occurred in 1974. It claimed then Tamil Nadu chief minister M. Karunanidhi was informed about the decision. The RTI reply shed light on Prime Minister Nehru's stance on the matter as he deemed the island of little strategic importance. Prime Minister Narendra Modi cited the RTI response to target the opposition at a rally in Meerut on Sunday. Congress ne char paanch dasak pehle keh diya ki ye dvip to gair jaruri hai. Ye Congress ke logo ne, India Alliance ke saathiyo ne, Ma Bharti ka ek ankaat diya. The opposition hit back at the BJP. Shiv Sena UBT MP Priyanka Chaturvedi tweeted an earlier RTI reply by the Modi government in 2015, which stated that the island was neither ceded or acquired. I'll only go by the RTI statement that was uh, responded to by the Ministry of External Affairs. Neither the Kachatibu Island has been acquired or ceded by India. So that clearly shows that there has been a shift in stance from 2015 to 2024 by, by Indian government. And that is unfortunate. Today, Prime Minister is using it for his political narrative, for his political gain to get a few seats in Tamil Nadu. The Congress and DMK accused the BJP of raking up old issues for political gains. Why are you raking up something after 50 years? Why are you not talking about what happened in the last two, three years? For the past 10 years, the government is run by the BJP. And Jay Shankar is the external affairs minister. Had he ever, and our leader had written many letters to him. He himself accepts that he had sent 21 letters to my CM. Has he ever stated that they will go have a talk with the Sri Lankan government and uh, take back Kachatim? Tamil Nadu is crucial for the BJP to meet their target set for the NDA to win 400 Lok Sabha seats. Will the Kachatimu issue give the BJP the momentum it is looking for in the southern state? Bureau Report, India Today. So just for the unverse, let's begin with the Kachateva Island. Where is this place and why is it of strategic importance to India? Why is the BJP raising this issue right now? This is a small strip of land very, very close to India. It's placed right here between Sri Lanka and India. So it's about 285 acre stretch. So it's a tiny strip of land, an island if you will, located just 33 kilometers from the Indian coast. The last point in Tamil Nadu is of course Dhanushkodi. So right below that, about 30 kilometers away is 
Kachatheva. So it's located between Rameshwaram, Dhanush Kodi is right there with Rameshwaram, and Sri Lanka. So this island was used by fishermen from both India and from Sri Lanka, which is why it was a big, big bone of contention, which is why the BJP today is saying that the Congress and the DMK let out the farmers and ensure the fishermen and didn't stand up for their cause. Uh, initially, it was a part of the Madras presidency. And there was a dispute that played out between India and Sri Lanka since the British era. Now, the contention is that there was solid evidence that if we had taken this to the international courts, this piece of land could very much have been a part of India. And yet, because there was no fight put up, it went to Sri Lanka. There is dispute over fishing rights around the island all through, in fact, since the British era. Both Indian fishermen as well as Lankan fishermen have been fighting it out. Now, it's very clearly Sri Lankan territory uh, since the 1974 agreement, of course. Let's tell you right now about the island controversy. Why has it now come up? If this is an agreement signed in 1974, why are we talking about it today? Because of an RTI reply, which has given our details. And according to the RTI reply, the, uh, what it confirms essentially is that this island was ceded to Sri Lanka by the former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. Besides that, it was handed over in 1974 by uh, the Indira government to Sri Lanka with absolutely no dispute. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The DMK was very much in the know-how. The then Chief Minister Karananadi was taken into confidence on Kachatheva. There are multiple records that confirm that, yes, there was non-stop correspondence between the central government and the state that told uh, and communicated to then Chief Minister Karananadi that this is going to happen. And there was no sort of objection or opposition put forth. The Foreign Secretary then was non-stop corresponding. Now, Nehru also, according to this RTI reply, now this is what's led to a bigger showdown. You've got the BJ constantly raising what Nehru said about Kachatheva, saying that this small island holds absolutely no importance for us and won't hesitate in giving up this island. A few years after this comment was made by Jawaharlal Nehru, that's exactly what happened. This land was given over, handed over essentially in a platter to Sri Lanka. But like I said, this has been a big, big political talking point in Tamil Nadu previously as well. Now, it's in the national spotlight because you've got many, many demands from regional parties in Tamil Nadu saying we should bring back Kachatheva because it will help fishermen of Rameshwaram. So will this be a big political talking point or not is the question. All right, joining me live here on 6 p.m. Prime on India Today is Priyanka Chaturvedi, Rajya Sabha MP, Member of Parliament. Priyanka Chaturvedi put out a very, very interesting social media post. And Priyanka, if I can begin with that. You've said that it's hypocritical of the BJP to talk about Kachatheva today uh, and to raise this RTI reply. Why is that? No, I don't call it hypocritical. I call it dangerous. I call it dangerous because it goes against India's integral interest, India's national interest. And it's also uh, diabolical because there, there are two different responses and two different stances on this issue by the same government. When the Prime Minister yesterday spoke about an RTI which has come out recently and it was covered by a leading newspaper, it said that we had ceded space. The, India's uh, first woman Prime Minister, whose national integrity and whose uh, interest in nationalism cannot be questioned by far, who had divided Pakistan into two for India's interest, ha, is being doubted and her, her, uh, you know, her choices and what she has, uh, steps she's taken are being questioned is being maligned by the current Prime Minister, uh, keeping in mind his political interest in Tamil Nadu. The uh, RTI that he was quoting has been filed by an office bearer of the Bharti Janta Party, who happens mm -hmm. to be the president of the Tamil Nadu Bharti Janta Party yeah, unit, who himself is contesting an election, and as per that, we have ceded that space. Now, I have an RTI in front of me, which is of 2015. 2015, the same Ministry of External Affairs has said on this mm -hmm. issue on Kachatibu, this did not include, involve either acquiring or ceding of territory belonging to India since the area in question had never been demarcated. So we are changing our stance because of our political interest and that is unfortunate. Today you are risking the lives of fishermen by saying that this, this particular uh, island has been handed over to, uh, to Sri Lanka. Whereas I can quote another RTI to you, 2013, which says... Yeah that we have a copy of the agreement on the boundary in historic waters between two countries and related matters, signed on 26, 1976, 26 June 1976, 
under Article 5 and under Article 6 of the same document, which has been signed sure. by both India and Sri Lanka, it says the vessels of Sri Lanka and India will enjoy in each other uh, each other's waters such rights as they have been traditionally enjoying. So okay. this is absolutely diabolical that to ensure that you win one or two odd seats as members of parliament, the Bharatiya mm -hmm. Janta Party, you all are staking, uh, you know, no, so you're doing away with national integrity. But Priyanka Chaturvedi, you know, you've cited a 2013 RTI reply, you've cited a 2015 RTI reply, and fair enough, those points are valid, I take that on record. Keeping aside the BJP for a moment here, yes, you said that all of this is being done for political mileage, it doesn't change the fact, Priyanka Chaturvedi, that the Congress and DMK together let Kachativa go. No, again, I'm repeating to you, and let me repeat this to you. Please do not keep, you know, uh, using the same narrative that is being pushed by the Prime Minister for his political interest. I'm sorry. Let me repeat what has been our stance as far as 2015. The same government, the Foreign Minister who did a press conference today was then the Foreign Secretary, Sushma Swaraji, was the Foreign Affairs Minister, did not involve either acquiring or ceding of territory no, belonging to India since the area in question has never been demarcated. And again, I'm reading out that signed document of 1976, which under Article 5 and Article 6, which has been signed by both the nations, says no visa would be required, no travel documents would be required for Indians traveling to this particular island or for, for uh, Sri Lanka to be traveling no, there. I take the your second thing we have said is vessels of Sri Lanka and India under Article 6. No, but I take your point, Priyanka. Let's say, uh, you know, let's take the word ceded out of it. Let's say it wasn't ceded in the official definition of the term. The reality is, however, that India didn't put up a fight when it should have for Kachativa. It doesn't take away from the fact that Kachativa is not with India, it's with Sri Lanka. And there was a 1974 agreement. Okay, so now I have a question to give you. Did India have any documents? Can you bring out any documents in terms of ownership? Today when the Prime Minister no, but it agreed the Madras presidency. with Bangladesh to do away with some territory of India, Indian territory to Bangladesh, does that mean that he put the India's, India's integrity at stake? Or that he undermined himself or he, for his political self-interest he gave away some land? It was a land border agreement, land boundary agreement. And if you go by the RTI, it clearly states that there was no Indian land at stake here. That's point one. Now point two. Will you all be able to ask the question of the Prime Minister? Okay, you're raking an issue 40 years old. And consecutive governments have worked towards ensuring that the fishing in fishermen's interest is not lost. And every successive government's foreign affairs ministry has worked to release them or to ensure that there's no harm done to them. My question mm. to you would be, would someone ask the Prime Minister that what is his thought on the uh, ceding away space to, uh, uh, to China? in Arunachal Pradesh and Ladakh, would their office bearer file an RTI and will the government of India okay. be as uh, generous in sharing information as they've shared with this, on this particular issue and they, where there are three different stances to, altogether of the Ministry of External Affairs? Would you, would, would that RTI be able to tell us that why is it that China has uh, renamed 30, no, so you've raised uh, eight, 30 cities of uh, Arunachal Pradesh? You've raised business? China. You've raised China. You've raised China repeatedly, Priyanka. The BJP maintains no land has been ceded there. So what's your response to that? That's something that even the Prime Minister said post the Galwan Valley clashes. But there are enough and more reports out there in public domain. I would only ask the Prime Minister the same thing. Considering a BJP office bearer came up with this RTI and you'll have given him a very detailed, I have the current RTI also, the detailed document that you'll have given a, a, a background history, a background note that has come from EMEA on the basis of which all this argument is being made. We would request mm. the Prime Minister, after his Jula diplomacy, what has gone downhill, why has it gone downhill with China and why is it that you'll continue to engage with China on the same very dispute that I'm talking about? Why is it that China has today gone and renamed 30 uh, border towns of Arunachal Pradesh? I'm giving you facts of history. Let's have a detailed discussion on that as well. I will repeatedly sure. raise China because that's a threat which we are all seeing. But the Prime Minister refuses to acknowledge. And we had a Minister of External Affairs who says, oh, since they are a bigger opponent, there's nothing much we can do. Isn't that also ceding India's interest? I think that is, the, uh, that is the question that needs to be asked. What you're discussing is a 40-year-old history. What you're not discussing is your tenure, tenure 
where you have ceded space to uh, the, to China without even getting into an agreement, which is in a win-win situation for for India. Okay, you raised you raised a valid point, and you're right in pointing out that this is a 40-year-plus dispute that's now being waked up by the BJP. But thanks very much, Priyanka Chaturvedi, for taking the time out and joining us here on India Today. Priyanka Chaturvedi is one among the many opposition leaders who've questioned the timing of the Kachati issue being brought up, and also highlighting previous RTI replies that said that no, this territory wasn't ceded. So it's interesting to really note the politics that's playing out on this. I want to put the focus, however, on the state of Tamil Nadu, because like I said, from the beginning of this broadcast, this issue has been contentious for the last many, many years in Tamil Nadu. And joining me here on 6 p.m. Prime is Mr. T. Ramakrishnan, Senior Associate Editor of The Hindu, a senior journalist based in Chennai. Mr. Ramakrishnan, thank you very much for joining us here on India Today. Thank you. come to you. Uh, can I just begin, sir, by starting off with, you know, how the BJP has been talking about the DMK stand on this and how the then Chief Minister Karunanadi was very much in the know-how. Why then did the DMK still raise Kachativa? And, you know, they've mentioned it also in the manifesto, if I'm not wrong, several times. See, uh, first of all, I think, uh, uh, just uh, let me clarify one or two things. That is, even sure. as late as July 20, 2022, government uh, took the stand that uh, the uh, Kacha Thibu, uh, lay on the other side, that is, on the uh, on the Sri Lankan side of IMBL. So, they gave a so government of uh, you know, the India Ministry of External Affairs, uh, Minister of State, Mr. Morley, there and gave a reply mm -hmm. to one of the questions raised by Mr. Vaito in July 2022. So that's the stand that they have taken. And of course, they say that it is a subsidies. And as far as your questions are uh, uh, concerned, that is, uh, the DMK's position is that it uh, it, it opposed the, um, it was supposed to uh, the seeding or it was supposed to the agreement. Yeah. Actually, is uh, Kachatibu uh, was uh, given, you can say, was conceded to Sri Lanka as part of the, as a, as a sequel to the signing of an agreement that is called International Maritime Boundary Line Agreement, IMBL. Okay, so whether that the IMBL, so Kachatibu should be on this side or that side, that was one of the issues. And of course, this, uh, this issue was being debated uh, between the two countries uh, for uh, more than 100 years. So it's between 1920, even before 1921, they started uh, rising this matter and 19. So this this issue had been there for over 100 years. So that's, uh, it's not a, it's, it's not a, a new or recent one. Of course, this, uh, the government of, uh, I think the 1974, after the agreement was signed, I think uh, the, uh, the Tamil Nadu Assembly adopted a resolution opposing the uh, uh, opposing the seeding of Kachatibu to Sri Lanka. But how does that work, yes, sir? Uh, because, you know, there are enough records that highlight that the then Chief Minister Karunanidhi was informed by the Indira uh, government that they yes, were going yes, to do uh, this. You, uh, no, no doubt he was, he was informed, he was consulted, and there was a meeting, I think, exactly a week before that. But the point was that, uh, as a matter of courtesy, I think he was informed. But uh, the decision was taken at the highest level. And mm -hmm. I think he understood the international uh, ramifications also. Uh, so this, uh, I am not here to uh, say that uh, Karnani was unaware of this decision of or unaware of uh, the, what what was going to happen a week later. But the point was that um, uh, rather he didn't. Uh, okay, during the meeting, uh, as you say, that the records did not show that he was he opposed that proposal. Only mm -hmm. thing he was asking whether. Uh, uh, Prime Minister had sounded the opposition, or you can delay this matter, or that. But uh, yes. the, but, but but he could understand that some sort of an understanding uh, was being arrived at. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. the highest level in the two countries. So let uh, let, let me not uh, uh, block it. Maybe that would have been his uh, strategy. Of course, he as a, as, a, as a political uh, uh, as a political uh, leader of Tamil Nadu. Of course, he didn't uh, the, the records even say that. Uh, he can he could not take a position uh, publicly in favor of the seeding of Kathachiva. That's I think. Uh, uh, but okay. the point is interesting. Because, yeah, 
interesting perspective that you've given us, sir. But uh, I'll wrap it up here. Thanks very much for joining us, sir. Uh, essentially, you got the message also there on what the DMK stand is. Mr. Ramakrishnan confirming that, yes, the then chief minister did agree, but he also understood foreign policy and what it took for India and Sri Lanka to really arrive at this. This is clearly an issue that's going to continue to snowball, especially in the run-up to the elections in Tamil Nadu. But will it actually have any impact in the state, particularly in South Tamil Nadu, where the BJP is looking to make inroads, we'll know in the weeks to come.